Not really, no. <laughs> to answer the question in the thumbnail, I have just saved you a view. You're welcome, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next week with a new video. <laughs> but, how do you know that you can trust my judgment on this one without sticking around to watch the rest of the video? To understand how I came to this conclusion? You can't, so you better stick around. And honestly, you probably shouldn't trust my judgment on this one because, full disclosure, this was my first time doing film soup, and this role of Harmon Phoenix was the first one that I ever had the pleasure of souping. And I did it with the help of this fantastic Winnipeg-based creator, Marilyn, from Almost Urban Fiberwork. So for those of you who don't know, film soup is almost exactly what it sounds like. You take a bunch of random chemicals and ingredients, put them in warm water, throw a roll of film in there, let it sit, pull it out, put it in clean water to rinse all those chemicals off, pull it out, dry it for one to two weeks, and then process it as normal. There are obviously a bunch of different iterations on this process, but those are the essential steps. It is absolutely imperative, if you are using a commercial lab, that you let them know that this roll has been souped, because if they don't know and they process it in chemicals that are then used to process other people's film, it has the potential to ruin those other people's pictures, which you don't want to do, <laughs> so let them know. Film soup is honestly a whole subgenre of film photography, and I feel like I kind of opened the door to it, looked inside, saw how much was going on in there, and then shut the door, because I already have too much going on to get sucked into this new hobby. <laughs> but despite not knowing much about the actual process, I have always wanted to try it out. And I had two rolls of Harmon Phoenix kicking around. I realized that there was no results online from people who had tried film soup with Harmon Phoenix, and so of course, I had to give it a shot. I shot this roll over Christmas while I was in Winnipeg, I was visiting my partner's family there, and his mother, Marilyn, is a fiber artist. She works with botanical dyes and all-natural fibers to create unique, one-of-a-kind, handmade pieces with a bunch of different methods. We've made cyanotype pieces together and floral arrangements using plants and flowers from her farm, and a lot of the dyes that she works with are grown right on the farm in Winnipeg as well, and it is really cool seeing them go from seeds to plants to dyes over the course of a year, depending on which time we're visiting. So of course, I thought it would be really fun to collaborate on this video, because I've seen people make film soup with flowers and teas before, and I figured natural dye flowers would be a really cool choice. So, armed with a very loose idea of how film soup worked, I set out to burn through an entire roll of Harmon Phoenix before we had to leave, and I was doing this about two days before our flight. So, all in all, I had about 24 hours to shoot this entire roll, and that was very antithetical to my usual film shooting process, but I managed to take 36 photos that I didn't deeply care about, but that I thought would be interesting enough to make a video with. It was snowy in Winnipeg, of course, so my photos are taken in this bleak, wintry environment. Almost Urban Farm is beside a river and a forest, and a highway and some railroad tracks. So I cajoled my partner, cajoled, cajoled, cajoled. <laughs> so I cajoled my partner into going for a wintry walk with me, and helping me get some footage, and also modeling for a few of my shots. So here's some footage he got of me in my natural environment, looking very candid and unrehearsed indeed. <laughs> and I got some cool double exposures and silhouette shots with him in them. Overall, I wanted to be really experimental with this role, because Harmon Phoenix itself is an experimental film stock, and film soup is an experimental process. So what better way to complement these mutual experimental attributes with an experimental photo style of my own. Lots of double exposures, lots of flaring, I tried some long exposures, I tried a bunch of different things. Some of them worked out, <laughs> some of them not so much. But eventually I had burned through the entire roll, and it was time for family chit chat and wine, and also researching how I was gonna soup this film. After looking at way more film soup recipes than I thought there were, uh, we finally decided on two dyes. So we have cochineal and dianthus. The dianthus were a dried flower that was grown on almost urban farm, and the cochineal is a powdered natural dye that was purchased at an all-natural dye store in Vancouver. I believe it's called Mawa. Both of these dyes had to be cooked, so Marilyn walked me through the process of making dye, which involves soaking the flowers, boiling, and then cooking them until they start to release their natural dyes. The cochineal, because it was a powder, released its dye fairly quickly, but the flowers took a bit more time. I think we wound up boiling them for about 45 minutes before it produced this beautiful deep red liquid. I was pretty taken aback by how dense both of the dyes were. I could barely see anything through them, and as you can see in this clip, I'm holding it up to the light, 
there's almost no light seeping through. That is a dense, dense pigment. At this point, I was getting a little bit nervous that maybe the negatives would come out too pigmented and I wouldn't be able to see anything on them. And perhaps that is what happened, <laughs> but I'll get to that a bit later. We poured each dye into a mason jar and added a special ingredient to each of them. So to the cochineal, we added a large dollop of dish soap. And yes, that is a very scientific term. <laughs> And to the dianthus, we added about a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. Obviously, I did a very good job documenting this process with scientific accuracy, and it's definitely something that I would be able to replicate if I wanted to try again. I dropped the film into the cochineal jar first and left it there for about 30 minutes, then fished it out and dropped it into the dianthus jar and left it there for about two hours. After all of the dyeing and the soaking had been complete, I pulled it out of there and put it in a new jar of warm water and left it to rinse in that jar overnight. In the morning, I pulled it out and bagged it up in a little baggie with some white rice. Rice is a desiccant and it will help to pull the moisture out of the canister more effectively than just leaving it in a warm, dry place, otherwise would. So it stayed in the rice for about three weeks before I pulled it out, informed my lab that I was giving them some dry film soup and got my results back a few days later. So let's talk about the results. Uh, I suppose you've already seen them throughout the video or at least you thought you were seeing them throughout the video. <laughs> However, the results that I've been showing you are actually the edited versions of the scans I got back from the lab, and I have edited them to make the effect more prominent and also to make them generally more palatable to look at. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the edited and unedited images. And as you can see, the unedited versions look very murky, drab, bland. But some of the scans I got back are basically unreadable, and I think where I went wrong with this was using a tinted dye. Because the dyes I used would have tinted the negatives red, when the colors were flipped in the scanning process, they would go kind of green, and so you get this really overpowering, like, dark green, oppressive color <laughs> throughout the entire roll. That green adds a lot more murk than I had originally anticipated. But with that said, I do feel like this effect can also be attributed to the film in some way, right? Like. The problems I see with my film souped roll are problems that I had with my previous roll of Harmon Phoenix, but exacerbated. Contrasty shadows become unreadable shadows. A narrow exposure latitude becomes a wafer thin exposure latitude. And everything in frame gets a little bit less articulated. Having said all this though, I do think it's an interesting look. It is not to my taste, but I do think that if you were somebody who likes Kind of a vintage look you're trying to get a vintagey vibe or a historical vibe in your photos this might be a cool way to achieve that without having to break the bank on historical alternative processing techniques the photos from this roll that did work out have a sepia-ish toning thick grain structure these large splotches kind of all over gives a vintagey appeal and of course they have this classic film soup color distortion look at least some of them have this film soup color distortion look. Honestly, I wish more of them had it. I lightened a few of the photos in Photoshop and then those like film soup distortions appeared, but they were not super visible and really hard to spot. I was hoping that by throwing my film into so many different concoctions, <laughs> these film distortions would become very prominent. I've obviously seen some really, really prominent examples online, uh, people who get crazy colors and distortions all throughout their film. That was not the case for this. And this is what my statements at the beginning of this video were alluding to. It's not that I just messed up and dyed my film the wrong color, it's that the actual film souping process didn't have a super noticeable impact on the film besides just obscuring it and making it a bit harder to read. I feel like film souping this Harmon Phoenix kind of ruined my role without giving me anything interesting in exchange. So this leads me to caution you against trying this with your own role of Harmon Phoenix, lest you should wind up with similar results to mine. That said, I had no idea what I was doing, and I only souped one roll of Harmon Phoenix. So in that case, I suppose I would encourage you to try this with your rolls so that we can get some better data before drawing solid conclusions. Of course, if you've already tried this, let us know in the comment section how your results compare to mine. That's everything that I had to say in today's video. I will probably return to the topic of film soup at some point in the near future. I did really enjoy this process, although waiting three weeks for the film to dry was very hard for my impatient soul. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to do this again at some point soon. I will see you guys next week with a new video. I'm going to be in San Francisco and LA, so we'll probably get some California-themed content coming up. Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. Maybe a street photography POV. Uh, let me know down in the comments if there's something specific you want to see. 
And if today's video got you all fired up to go and buy a roll of Harmon Phoenix and test out film soup, you can do so with my affiliate link down in the description below for Freestyle Photo LA. I noticed that people have been using the affiliate link and that's very exciting for me. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, please continue to do that. It is the best way to help support this channel because you get film and I get money and everyone's happy. Another way to help support the channel is to click the buy me a coffee link and to send me five bucks and buy me a coffee and all proceeds from that link go towards helping to improve the quality of content that I'm able to offer on this channel. I have recently hired a video editor, which is very exciting. Maybe you noticed the change in style in this video. And so proceeds will be going towards that. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next week. And in the meantime, I want you to stay sharp and don't forget to keep shooting. Bye guys.